It's Saturday morning, and that means it's time for Spartan Nation TV. With me, your host, Hondo Carpenter from SpartanNation.com. Joined by the Duckett Dynasty, legendary Michigan State and NFL running backs, Tico and TJ Duckett. Now, it's time for Spartan Nation TV. Good morning and welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter, along with legendary Michigan State and NFL running backs, the great Tico and TJ Duckett. Well, the bye week is over for the Spartans. It was a terrible week for a bye week after a play like they had in Oregon. You just want to get back on the field, and the Spartans are doing that today against the Eastern Michigan University. Tico, I want to throw to you. Pat Narduzzi told me late last week, expect some changes on the depth chart. What sure. do you think of that? Well, I think we got exposed a couple weeks ago, and they're still trying to find, you know, the togetherness and work together and who's doing what. So I think we'll see some changes today. What do you mean when they, you say they've been exposed? Well, there's some, some areas that we saw in, in the defensive back area, cornerback, that we got beat a couple of times. A couple of people missed their, their assignments, and now's the time to step up, not lose, lose their assignments and miss Place. TJ, one of my favorite players on this team is Curtis Drummond, the captain. I just absolutely love this young man. Great person. And he said to me on Thursday, this loss is blamed on no one but the players. If you can come out of the Oregon game with a silver lining, I think guys taking responsibility, not pointing fingers at the staff because there wasn't a lot to point, that's mm -hmm. pretty impressive. It's very impressive. The guys taking ownership of the, che of the whole entire team. And a loss, not just pounding their chest in the win, but to go into the bye week and, and have players be reevaluated. Now you have a whole week to see where you've messed up the first couple games, live action, live bullets are flying, and maybe some people might not be ready for that type of atmosphere, type of environment, and then give some other people a chance to play. TJ, a program like Michigan State is no longer in a position for moral victories. It's real victories that count. Mm -hmm. However, in the loss against Oregon, can there be a silver lining that this team now understands you don't play two and a half quarters, you play three and a sense of urgency come from it? Yeah, and, and, and it's great because it happened early in the year. If it would have happened later, now you're getting close to the end of the season mm -hmm. and mistakes are more magnified. But to have it happen now, it builds that resilience. It builds the maybe the team chemistry, the ownership of the team. It builds all these things that true champions have. Tico, is Michigan State now the team to beat? They've been, they've been the team to beat, and I, I think they're going to continue to be the team to beat until the end of the season. I totally agree. What's, TJ, ask you, are they the team to beat to go to the playoff from the Big Ten? They are. The, to have the year that they had last year, to come into this season with expectations, now to have had that loss a few weeks ago, reset the tone, reestablish who they are, reestablish their identity, and continue to push, yes, they are. Gentlemen, I am not a fan of the NCAA rescinding the bowl bid on Penn State because it's a lot bigger issue than just money. It's an issue of crimes committed against children. And I know people say, but it's not fair to the student athletes. Everyone that was there when the crimes happened have been, were allowed to transfer, and everyone that came knew the bowl ban. I don't like it. Your thoughts, TJ? Well, it, it's, 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 it's tough because they're, the people who are involved in it are no longer a part of it. So can you go to the team and maybe suspend the player or the, the coaches? Maybe yes. Now, still, it's, it's still a university. They still play the game. And because these students are new, it, hopefully it's a whole new thing. So I'm, I'm kind of both, both sides of it. I don't think it's the players who are there now. They should not have to be punished for this. Sure. I just think it's sending a big message that football is a business. A lot of money yeah. to be made. And if you do something wrong, it's OK. Well, and then the NCAA, when they say it's not about money, it's about the student athlete. Again, yeah. <laughs> this is that dual side of being sure. duplicitous. I, I think it's all about money. Isn't it always? Yeah, of course it is. It's a business. <laughs> all right, coming up next on Spartan Nation TV, we look at the offense. What can you expect today from the Spartans when we come back? MSU Federal Credit Union is a proud supporter of Michigan State University Athletics. On or off the court. MSU Federal Credit Union supports my team. My team. My team. My team. And we just wanted to say thanks. Thank you, MSU FCU. Thanks. Thank you.
The right moves can win a game. The wrong move can take you out. Get off the sidelines and back in the game with world-class care from MSU Sports Medicine. Our team of physicians and specialists diagnose and treat athletic and performance injuries. We've expanded our care to include pediatric sports and injuries associated with dance and performing arts. Our team will get you back on track, whatever your game. Call MSU Sports Medicine at 884-6100. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Simple Tea Printing and Embroidery. We make shirts and we give back. Good morning. Welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Tondo Carpenter, along with the great TJ Duckett and the man, the legend, the way of life, Tico Duckett. Hey. Gentlemen, let's now turn our attention to offense. D'Antonio said of Connor Cook's play, quote, not good enough. TJ, I like that, just putting it out there. And yeah. he said also, quote, Connor would agree with me. Yeah, it's expectations. It's a, it's a different place now. And to say that mistakes here are okay to get away with, maybe not showing the proper leadership at time during that game is okay. That's not the standard that's been created, and that's not who we are, who we are in that position. Tico, Mark D'Antonio also went on to say, if this were last year, I would have said he had a great game. Does that maybe mm -hmm. talk about the expectations on Cook? But and this program sure. that people are disappointed they went to Oregon and lost exactly. I, the growth. Well, you expect more. I mean, every year you expect to get better and better. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, if you're being stagnant and you're not growing, there's an issue, and, and coach recognizes that. And, and he set the bar high last year. <laughs> I mean, did. it started out we didn't know who was going to be the head guy, who's right. the quarterback, and over the season. This guy emerges, and all, now he's Big Ten champ, Rose Bowl sure. champ, and now you come back and have this awesome offseason, and now you're falling backwards. It's a time to pull that coat collar, and let's, let's get you back in line. I remember last year having dinner at Tom Izzo's house, and he made the comment, because we were talking about the success of the football program, and he says the hardest part is maintaining it yeah. now that the expectations are there, and I think that, that was, yeah. in a nutshell, said it. It's true. I mean, when you're on top, as they say it's hard, harder to get to the top, and it's easier to fall off, off the top. TJ, you were a power back. You had a ton of speed. You were faster than anybody on the field, but you loved to run through guys. You were more of a finesse back, so I, I give you this question. What's happened to Jeremy Langford? You know, I, I was thinking about that, Hondo. I think that um, we need to bring the competition back, you know, as, as a running back. If you're not producing, that's why you should have one or two one, two punches, because one person's hot, the other one wants to be hot. So you create the competition, and I want to see that come back. It, it could be a couple of things. Maybe he's looking past the season into a next level, next place. But it's not. there's no comfort there. There's no swole. Like, <laughs> there's no swag. Right, right. No, just, it's like, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. You, I mean, you, you got to have fun playing. Right, you got to right. have energy. I mean, Tico used to tell me when I, when I would play, get up and signal first down. Get up and show how in tune in the game you are and how that energy is. And that energy just isn't existing right now with him. It's just a, a person who's just following the path, if you will. You both sure. have been great college players and great NFL players. Brian Allen comes in as a true freshman in this recruiting class. True freshman who D'Antonio has yep. never played one, <laughs> and now he's playing three positions on the offensive line. When I say never played one, I mean as an offensive lineman. Sure, and, and to that point, TJ came in and played as a true freshman. And I know when I came in, I could not play as a true oh, freshman. The, the speed was tremendous. But for Allen, first of all, he has an older brother, Jack. I mean, he's learning. He's listening, and to be able to play three positions on the line, that's incredible. That's yeah. phenomenal. TJ, you came in, and D'Antonio has always said it's easier at the skill positions to play quick. Why is it so difficult for a true freshman offensive lineman to play besides the obvious strength? There's so, uh, especially at the offensive line position, there's so many technical terms. Mm -hmm. You have to completely gel all the way together. Signals are being called, players are being pointed out, and you have to be able to see who's moving in and out. And if you're not used to that speed or not used to where these bodies are coming from, you're going to have some issues. As a runner or a skill position, it's Run right here, hit the hole. Right. Uh, for me, I mean, I ran into a lot of my offensive line's backs thinking the hole's supposed to be right there. <laughs> and, I mean, there, there's a difference in mind state. A lot of his former offensive linemen still have cleat marks right exactly. <laughs> on their back. I'm sorry. I'm Tony sorry. Lippett, guys, he made me look really smart. At the beginning of the year, I voted him as an All-American wide receiver. He's among the top five. 
What a performance we've seen this year out of Tony exactly. Lippitt. Well, every year you, you're looking for that superstar, and I, I think Tony is stepping into that role. And, you know, I, I, when I think about Tony, I think about a lot of great receivers we've mm -hmm. had, and, you know, he's stepping into that role. It's good to see. He's having fun doing it. I mean, every time he catches the ball, he does something. He makes you get energized. He, he catches it, and you know there's a play that's going to be made, and you know he's enjoying making that play. Michigan State has three legitimate NFL tight ends. When you look at it with Josiah Price, Andrew Gleichart, of course, I think is going to get a look, and there's others. My legitimate thought is I want to see more out of the tight end today. How about you? I do, too. I mean, that's something we've been lacking once again. To, the tight end seems to not be in the, in the offense, and that, that would be easy for Connor Cook to – you know, do the dump off passes that take a lot of pressure off the and that, and that that completely expands our offensive right. game. Absolutely. And with our tight ends, I believe that they present different mismatches mm -hmm. on the defense. I mean, whether it's a corner now having to guard a tight end or you have a linebacker, there's gonna be some type of mismatch that the coaches will put that player in. And and I really right. like Jamal Lyles. Let's not forget a about absolutely. him. He may be the best of the three. He may be, but what we didn't see against Oregon was was a lack of tight end play. And dragging that tight end across yeah. the middle was their guys. That you saw with Josiah Price. Absolutely. Okay, now we switch to mobility from Cook. We've talked about it on this show. I asked him about it this week. He said, quote, I have to do that. Mm -hmm. TJ. He, he is aware of what it takes, watching what has been going on from other quarterbacks that we've played against and the type of havoc they've raised on our defense. I think that really opened his eyes to that. But also, he knows he can do it. He's done it in the past and now just have confidence in it. Totally Absolutely. agree. We're going to hit that one more second when we come back. You're watching Spartan Nation TV. One more quick comment about the mobility of the quarterback, and then we'll move to defense when we come back. Hi, I'm Kevin Witkin, owner of Discount One Hour Signs. We've been proudly serving the Lansing area since 1979. We pride ourselves in producing the best signs at the best prices, fast. From traditional graphics, vehicle wraps, lighted signs, whatever your needs, we do it all. Remember, a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Discount Signs, Lansing's top sign shop since 1979. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at the MSU Federal Credit Union, proud sponsors of MSU Athletics. Good morning. Welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host. I was just renamed by Tico Hondizi. <laughs> That's my Hondizi. <laughs> All right. Tico Duckett, TJ Duckett. I don't know what a Hondizi is, but uh, I'll tell you later. I hope it's a compliment. <laughs> I'll tell you later. All right. Guys, let's turn to the defense. Shalit Calhoun, Marcus Rush. Marcus Rush later this year, God forbid an injury, is going to set the record for all-time starts in Spartan football history. These two young men are underrated, and they both played well against Oregon. They, they played very well. They've been playing well all, all season and last season as well. But the one thing that we have to get with these guys is they have to be able to get a mobile quarterback. Whenever a mobile quarterback's out there, that it always hinders them, and, and that's the only thing they need to work on. Would Shalik Calhoun, TJ, in all honesty, be the only probably defensive end you faced even in the NFL that could have caught you? No, I, I wouldn't. No, <laughs> no, no, I'm no. just saying you were a sub 4-4 four, four <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, but there was guys like Julius Peppers coming out oh, there. Yeah. There was some monsters <laughs> yeah. out there. But uh, he, he, if he continues to play at his level and high level that he is, he, he will be in that same category. I had an AFC scout equate him to Julius Peppers to me. Do you see a lot of Julius? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's the long build, the, the huge athleticism. He has that. It's just probably a little bit bigger. I mean, he still has to bulk up a little more. But if he continues on this path, he definitely will be able to fit in those shoes. We talked a lot in the preseason about tackle. Defensive tackle. Joel Heath moves in, a 4640 guy from defensive end. He moves to defensive tackle. LT, a former five star middle linebacker, mm -hmm. moves to DT, to, to DT. What are your thoughts on the DT play this year? I, I think they've been doing well. You know, they've been containing, uh, pushing all the runners in, letting the guys, you know, linebackers make the tackles. I think they're stellar. You know, they're, they're doing well. I think it's almost been a little underrated, in my opinion. 
I, I wouldn't say underrated. I, I think that we got a little exposed against Oregon, so we need to get this back and see where we're at. But in fairness, TJ, your brother says they got exposed. They only played three defensive tackles against Mariota. I think a lot of that can be truthful being tired. I was, I was very impressed at the, the, the front four and the pressure that they put on Oregon's quarterback. All day. The problem <clears throat> was they didn't wrap them up when they got <laughs> there. I mean, they were getting, they were putting so much pressure from four people. I mean, having him, making him move that way, but then they would have him buy a shirt and he'd spin. I mean, so if they can just seal the deal and finish, we have plenty of pressure up front coming in on all the alleys. And the biggest part, they trust each other. They stay in their lanes. Yeah. They're not trying to make plays for each other. That's a great they point. Ha they handle mm -hmm. their, their assignments. That's yeah. a great point. Craig Evans, the true freshman from Wisconsin that's playing a defensive tackle, did not play at Oregon, and they took him out to the game. And I asked Narduzzi about that this week, Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator, why didn't you play Craig Evans? He said, uh... He's north of 325 pounds, <laughs> and with their offense, we didn't think we'd get him off the field. TJ? Yeah, that's a problem. But I think part of being him being out there was being exposed to the atmosphere, the environment, what it takes to prepare. And it wouldn't be his first time in a hostile environment. And the truth is, all that hostility is tough going into the game. By the time you get your first hit, by the time everything settles, now it's you're all gone, now right? it's, all gone. <laughs> it's all gone. But you have to understand yeah. what it's like with the bus, the pregame leading up sure. to it. Kickoff comes, man, it's, it's football. Greg Jones said to me that really the only place it stuck with him was at Nebraska's Memorial Stadium where all game it made a difference. Hmm. He, do you agree with that, though? Usually the first hit, it doesn't matter. Well, I, I think it, it all depends also on the downs. You know, big third downs and the crowd's going crazy. You sometimes hear that, but usually after the first play or two, you're, you're playing. And it's just the jitters. I mean, it's really, I mean, you can be in a place where it's a full game of noise, but also that's part of the game. You know sure. it's third hey. down. I know it's third down. Let's go. <laughs> but it's, it, and that's, part, that's, that's how you, sure. that's how you, sure. and, and in your own environment, it's going to be loud on third down anyway, so it's part of it, but it's the uncertainty of what to expect not going into a place I've ever been before. Sure. Third down, everybody's loud. It's like Will Smith said, let's just get jiggy with it. <laughs> 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 All right. Now, staying on that same vein, we stick with the Michigan State defense. Darian Hicks, I think if you look at his job, he struggled a little bit against Oregon. They picked him, you know, bringing another mm -hmm. receiver over. But still, very young, first year starting as a true sophomore. Sure. I like where Hicks is going. I, I like him too, and it's all about reps. You know, he has to keep getting the repetition, keep understanding and learning. And, and like Ernest Spiner, I would say, you have to work every play. Mm -hmm. Every play you're working. TJ, I have been disappointed with the linebackers, all of them this year. I think all of them at times have had good points, but they've all struggled. Did last year's linebacking crew just set the bar way high? They set the bar high, but they were very, very experienced, in my opinion. And they had an amazing leader. And that leader wasn't just the leader of the linebacking core. He was, quite honestly, the leader of the team. Leader of the locker room guy. Yeah. Totally agree. Was... When we come back, we turn our attention to Eastern Michigan. That's the opponent today. We'll have them up next. I bet you've got some dreams. My dreams drive my passion. To do what I love. To make a difference by teaching others. To make the world a greener and better place. To run my own business. To see where the road takes me. MSU Federal Credit Union offers auto loans to help drive your dreams to reality. We know you've got dreams. MSU FCU can help. The right moves can win a game. The wrong move can take you out. Get off the sidelines and back in the game with world-class care from MSU Sports Medicine. Our team of physicians and specialists diagnose and treat athletic and performance injuries. We've expanded our care to include pediatric sports and injuries associated with dance and performing arts. Our team will get you back on track, whatever your game. Call MSU Sports Medicine at 884-6100. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Message Makers, creators of experiences that transform. Good morning. Welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Hondizi, along with Tico <laughs> and TJ Duckett. Guys, you rename me. All right. With a name like Hondo, I'll take Hondizi. Right, right. We turn to Eastern Michigan today. And no disrespect to Eastern Michigan or Coach Creighton, who is a personal friend of mine. But this game has nothing to do with Eastern Michigan. Mm -hmm. This game is all about Michigan State. They need to make a statement. They need to say, we're a championship team. 
We let Oregon get away with one. I want to see them run the score through the roof. Mm -hmm. Where am I wrong, TJ? Yeah, and Hanna, you mentioned on the break when we were talking about this being probably the most important game of the season. Mm -hmm. And I 100% agree. This is one of the defining moments for our team. We need to go out and prove that a couple weeks ago isn't who we are and set the new standards so the team that we play the following week now is watching this film like, right. these right. guys are on fire. Tico, I always tell my son, Duffy, that integrity is what a man does when no one is around. And obviously there's going to be thousands of people in the stadium and millions watching on television. But today's game is that statement. Can you come up against an Eastern and just take care of business, shut them out, and destroy them? Sure. I, I think it's not the game of the year, but I think it's the first half of the year. Mm -hmm. If we can come out and the starters can go up three, four, five touchdowns yep. in the first half, then we should let all the rest of the guys come in and get their reps. TJ, do you like playing Eastern Michigan after Oregon, or would you have liked to see a tougher game? Uh, for personally, right now, I like seeing Eastern Michigan get a, give us some confidence again. It would have been very, very tough to go play another team, and we're still a young team that hasn't fully embraced being champions Great point. Yet. So, yeah, I, I, this is a great time right now. You know, it's funny you say that. I want to take the Tom Izzo approach. Mm -hmm. I want to play uh, number one ranked teams two three back to back and just get after it so we're not i don't i don't i, I don't mean play, i, I just I, that's I why want, you like I, basketball and <laughs> football guys. i'm just saying I, I like that and then you, you can really get a measure I, I i don't get a good measure off of it off of the skills off of eastern michigan we do know this today wearing the green and white on the opposite sideline is former spartan all-american and one of our very dear friends the great Herbie Haygood. Mm -hmm. Guys, I know neither one of you went into coaching, but how much would that <laughs> stink to come back and have to wear the gear of another team? Because you sure. know this is killing Herb, TJ. Yeah, and I, I played with Herb. We were on the team at the same time, so I've talked to him about this game. And he doesn't appreciate it. I mean, he, <laughs> it, it's hard. I know he's going to have this team fired up yep. to, to beat them, to beat Michigan State. But at the same time, he was he's probably one of the most passionate, diehard Michigan State players that I've ever, ever. known. So he's going to hear that band and start having all these memories, and that is going to affect his just own personalness. I texted his wife, Emily, and said, do you want to sit with us? <laughs> <laughs> she probably said yes. I'm <laughs> not going to tell you what she said. Okay. All right, now we go spread multiple. Again, you're going to see some multiple out of uh, Eastern Michigan. You're going to see some spread out of them. I kind of like it. Michigan State's getting a little bit of variety here as far as what they're going to face offensively. Exactly, and that's what we want. We, we, if you want to say we want to practice, you know, we want to see what we mm -hmm. see, make our adjustments, and get ready for when it really counts. Mm -hmm. We want to have been there already. TJ, I want to see Gerald Holmes, the running yeah. back. Please, please, I know he had a hurting. Gerald Holmes, please. I would be excited to see him play. I want to see Langford get his groove back. I do too. I want to see him get, and if that means Holmes coming in and, and adding a little extra threat to that, sure. so be it. But I do, I do want to see the run. I want to see the running game as a whole. I'm, I'm still a Dalton fan. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I like Holmes, young guy, but I think Dalton. Will be I did, I'm in. ready for this running game. Hey, to I get don't going. care who it is. So I don't ready. care if he's black, white, pink, green, Man. blue. I just see a get, running game. I want to see I'm a running game. Ready for that? I'm like a starving guy here. Just give yes. me food. I'm not going to yes. say Ruth Chris. Right. That's why I'm ready for that. Exactly. <laughs> when you look at this team and you look at this game, you're right, TJ. I did say it at the break. I thought this was a monster game of the year because this is a statement game. Mm -hmm. Do you see my point, Tico? It's not disrespect to Eastern Michigan, but Eastern Michigan has nothing to do with today. Sure. Well, I, I think if we want to be considered the powerhouse national champion team, We've got to come in and put our foot on the gas and show people what we can do and mean it mean it, and put a big statement on it. Do you agree with my assessment of week one? I want to see Connor Cook get out with a huge lead and sit the second half. For this week, no. I, we need to play. We, we, we had our sit out the second half, and we started the second first half of the next game <laughs> pretty slow. That's a great point, I TJ. mean, now we're in, we're in the mix. This is football season. How many more games do you need to rest, man? It's time we need you to play and go. All right, you're watching Spartan Nation TV. When we come back, we have our big predictions right here on Spartan Nation TV.
I'm Kevin Whitkin, owner of Discount One Hour Signs. We've been proudly serving the Lansing area since 1979. We pride ourselves in producing the best signs at the best prices, fast. From traditional graphics, vehicle wraps, lighted signs, whatever your needs, we do it all. Remember, a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Discount Signs, Lansing's top sign shop since 1979. Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Video Vision 360. High octane, in the action, videography specializing in sports, entertainment, and adventure. And by Clauda Irish Pub. Clauda Irish Pub, home of the Guinness Perfect Pour. Hi, we're from Chi Omega, and you're watching Spartan Nation TV. Go Green! This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Moneyball. Moneyball, it's the only way to ball. Good morning, welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter, along with legendary Michigan State and NFL running backs, Tico and TJ Duckett. Gentlemen, it's time for predictions. We throw it to you, Tico, to go first. We're all tied at one and one on the year, so no one officially owns the shield. The Spartan Nation TV logo, so I will hold it and keep it safe. <laughs> okay. I shall not relinquish it. Yeah, don't hold on to that. I think t today we're going to run the table. I mean, we're going to dominate passing, running, defensively. Um, we're going to see some of the second, third string guys come in second half. But I, I, I predict the score to be 66 to 3. 66, 66 to 3. And they need to put that on the board 66. to show what we're starting. I like it. I like it. I, um, I, this will be our, uh, a defining point. Uh, the score I'm going to say is 42 to 0. There's going to be this time our defense now steps up. Our defense runs the table. I want to see our running game. I, don't, I want to see our runners run for 200 yards. One guy, if not a com combination of 200 yarders. 200 yards. But at least one guy today is going to get off. Two weeks ago, they played Florida. They were held to zero points. I think Michigan State has a better defense. I expect Eastern Michigan to not be able to score today, even though I think they're going to get a full dose of the Michigan State backups. However, I think the Michigan State offense is going to do something a little bit different. I think they're going to explode. I don't think Mark D'Antonio is going to keep his foot on the gas like a Florida did because he does respect Coach Creighton. It is an in-state school. But in the end, Michigan State will win it 62 to nothing. How much time do you want to see for backups? I, I'd like to see the second half. I don't want to see him at all. <laughs> okay. I want, us, I want us to set our tone and get on this role where I don't, want, I don't want players to go into the game thinking, well, if we get off, I'm going to shut it down. Right. I agree with you. No, we, let's go. We are, we are trying to be Big Ten National. We're trying to be champions here. You know, I would agree with you only if it wasn't Eastern Michigan. It doesn't matter. You know, I, I just we, don't want anybody to so get an ankle, get a knee, and we're up. And you, you know, know, like, Do we I need know, a hug here? No. Nah. <laughs> okay. But you know, like, I know that's capable of any game. Sure. And it only happens when you start to lower your level of play is when you get yes. hurt. Last week, gentlemen, three Michigan State quarterbacks led their teams to NFL victories. Drew Stan at Arizona, Brian Hoyer, of course, with the Cleveland Browns, and Kirk Cousins with the Washington Redskins. How big for State was that, TJ? It was huge. It was great. I love seeing those guys get off at the next level and, and show up and, and make huge plays. I would like to see if Drew Stanton was under D'Antonio, how he would have probably been, you know, how he would have came out. But it, it shows you that we had a great lineage of, of quarterbacks that had been at Michigan State. Totally agree with you. All right, folks, it's still not too late to get out to the stadium. We'll see you next Saturday right here on Spartan Nation TV. Guest of Spartan Nation State, Country Inn and Suites. Curtis Grimm.